I'm Barkley Thompson. I'm Brooklyn Rowland. And I'm Megan Torres. This is, we are the group, not the first 10, and EDM 310 at the University of South Alabama. This is project number eight. The book we were assigned to read, Teach Like Your Hair Is On Fire, was written by Rafe Esquiv. He is a teacher in an inner city school in Los Angeles. He has taught for over 25 years. He works at a year-round school. <clears throat> he teaches fifth graders, and he explains that his class is immersed in Shakespeare, algebra, and rock and roll, and all other class time is spent on the road. The prologue starts with a story about a crisis of faith. Um, one day, Rafe was teaching a fifth grade science experiment. A young girl was having trouble getting her wick to burn on her burner. Um, he went over to help her. He was so enthralled in helping her understand how to make it work that he didn't realize that his hair was caught on fire. Um, some of the students told him that his hair was on fire. And um, from that day forward, he vowed to always teach like his hair was on fire. He says that he was so enthralled in teaching that student what to do and how to do it that he didn't even notice something as intense as his hair being on fire. In the prologue, he continues to say that uh, we need to be aware that our society is full of racism, poverty, and ignorance. Teachers will meet a lot of resistance, not only from administration and politicians, but other teachers as well. And even the hardiest of teachers can be crushed by that. He doesn't have all the answers, but he hopes that his experiences, coupled with another teacher's experiences, will create an environment in which the students can learn. His advice to teachers is this. Create a classroom where character matters, hard work is respected, humility is valued, and support for one another from students is He says that true excellence takes sacrifice, mistakes, an enormous amount of effort. In chapter one, Rafe's, Rafe gives us four things that you can do to keep your classroom in order without resorting to fear. The first of these is replace fear with trust. Explain that anything can be fixed, but broken trust. His example is that a kid didn't do his homework and that was something that was broken. Those things can be moved on from, but broken trust um, takes a lot of time and effort to fix. He uses the fallback exercises as an example where someone stands behind another person and that person falls back and you have to catch them. If somebody tricks you and moves out of the way, um, that trust is broken and it takes a long time to get that back. Secondly, he goes on to say that children depend on us so we need to be dependable. Never break your promise. The example he uses in the book is a teacher promised an exciting trip to their students all year long to get them to behave and do their work on time. And in the, at the end of the year, they ended up not going. The third thing is discipline must be logical. Children do not mind a tough teacher, but they despise an unfair one. Punishment must get out of class and you punish the whole class for it. That doesn't work. It doesn't, no one under, no one learns a lesson from that. Um, say you have a student that doesn't do his homework, so you punish him by not allowing him to go to art the next day. There's no connection there. Make activities so exciting that the worst punishment is to be banned from the activity. Um, an example is that a teacher was not allowing their students to miss school to participate in a performance. The parents demanded that their children be allowed to go since the other classes were. After the performance, the teacher made the students write the following sentence 100 times a day for a week. In the future, I will make more responsible choices about my education. All this did was simply cause the students to not trust the teacher, and he lost all form of respect that they had for him. The fourth thing that Rafe wants us to understand is that you are a role model. Never forget the kids watch you constantly. And even if you don't think they see you, they do. And you have to be the person you want them to be. <laughs> Lastly, Rafe says that you need to use every opportunity as a, every moment as an opportunity to build trust. If a student can't find their homework in an assignment, instead of immediately punishing them, use it to teach them more uh, better organizational skills. It will show that student and the entire class that you are reason reasonable and fair and they will trust you. Chapter two is entitled Searching for Level Six. In this chapter, Rafe uses the Lawrence Colbert's Six Levels of Moral Development to tell you how to keep your classroom under control, even if you have a sub. Level one is, I don't want to get in trouble. Most students are trained from day one to be level one thinkers. When you were a kid, how many times did you do your homework just to keep your teacher happy? Level two would be, 
when a child says, I want a reward. Teach children that proper behavior is expected, but not rewarded. There is a teacher that pits his students against each other in a competition to see which team can co complete the most homework for a prize at the end of the year. The class in the end did most of the homework, but they had a limited understanding of, of how everything worked. So in the end, it didn't really do any good. Level three is I want to please somebody. And he uses an example of a student who was essentially an assistant teacher for a day when they had a sub. Uh, when the teacher returned, he was offered an, a reward and he turned it down. For the student, it was all about pleasing his teacher, nothing else. Oftentimes, this mindset leads to kids picking a college major just to please their parents, which in the end can lead to them being unhappy and frustrated adults. Level four is follow the rules. And this is one of the most popular levels. Teachers laid down the law on the first day, and some even explain why those are the rules. Others that are more creative even get their students involved in the creation of the rules. Your rules should be used as a lesson that is carried over outside of the classroom, but your students should also know that sometimes rules <coughs> can and should Level be I am, a, I am considerate of other people. If we can help kids achieve empathy for other people, then we have achieved a lot. Level six, I have a personal code of behavior and I follow it. This level resides within the soul of an individual and it is extremely difficult to teach. Rafe attempts to teach this by giving the children good examples and the characters and people that he discusses. Chapter 12 is entitled Think for Yourself. The first lesson Rafe teaches his students is that pencils do not solve problems, people do. On the first day of school, he hands out the problem solving Bible and takes it to all of his students' desks. Um, it's very simple. Step one is understand the problem. Put your pencils down. You're simply collecting relevant data from the problem. Step two is choose an appropriate strategy. From act it out to choose an operation, draw a picture, guess and check, look for a pattern, make a chart or table, make an organized list, use logical reasoning, or work backwards. Step three is when you're actually going to solve the problem. You pick up your pencils for this and actually work the problem out. For step four, you analyze. Does my answer make sense? Chapter 13 is about teaching your students to enjoy movies. Great movies can help children build character. Uh, learn about the impact of good and bad decisions, and be inspired to stand up for their beliefs in difficult situations. However, Rafe stresses that you shouldn't allow your students to watch movies in place of teaching, but to emphasize what you are teaching. And lastly, in the epilogue, for every child you may help, there are dozens who make you want to give up. Find your reason to keep going, to not surrender.